It's raining worms in China right now. Okay, recently there's been a lot of weird things going on in China. Like them finding a new island covered in dinosaurs. And now apparently it's raining worms. All went well until one terrible night in the 1950s when the school principal snapped and of the young girls in his care. So, Ten years after the disappearance of flight MH370, the search for the Malaysia Airlines plane could resume. Here's the latest on the investigation. I'm back with FITCI today, and today we're going to take a look at these TikToks. If you guys like the chain, check the link down in the description. Fit 10 for 10% 10 off. Heard of your next on the menu? The story goes like, there was a young woman who started a bed and breakfast. She put a listing on the internet looking for a private chef to hire for the bed and breakfast to make the guests breakfast before they leave. A private chef reached out to her and they set up a time for the chef to come over to the bed and breakfast and make a trial breakfast to see if they would like to hire the chef to make breakfast for the guests. When the chef got there, she was acting a little strange, but they didn't really think anything of it. She wasn't talking much, and when she did talk, she made very strange comments. The bed and breakfast owners gave the chef some privacy to make the breakfast in the kitchen, and when the chef was done, she served them up a plate of food. She served them up a plate of pancakes, but only they weren't real pancakes. The chef had served the young woman a plate of a skinned human face. This is actually in the plot of my new YouTube video, so if you want to watch it, just click the link in my bio or type in my YouTube username and subscribe. Yo, what's up? Here's some scary facts about our world that you probably didn't want to know. Part 44. There is a type of shark species known as the Greenland shark that can live upwards of 200 years. One, because it is adapted to the cold water in the Arctic Ocean, and the second reason is because it'll eat anything that falls in the water. That means polar bears, penguins, and anything up above. If you were to travel to space in a spaceship, traveling the speed of light, let's say at age 15, when you came back five years later, you would be 20, but all of your friends, well, they'd be 65. There is a condition known as the Cotard Syndrome, otherwise known as the Walking Corpse Syndrome, in which people suffer from believing that they have never existed and that they have been dead this whole time. If you go to a Catholic priest and tell him that you murdered somebody, they can't say a word because of Catholic law and they will keep your secret. Please don't get any ideas. This scary story about the lemonade. One day, a boy named Craig was walking down the street when he suddenly saw a lemonade stand. He was thirsty and he loved lemonade. So he walked over and asked the man who was working for a cup. The man was very old and was dressed in old fashioned clothes. This confused Craig, but he ignored it after he took a sip of the lemonade. It was the best lemonade he ever tasted. Craig then said, whoa, I have to go get my friend. Craig then ran to his friend's house and told him about the lemonade. His friend then ran back to the lemonade stand with him. But when they got to the spot it was at, it was gone. Craig was extremely confused. Craig's friend then asked him who was working the stand. Craig then said a creepy old man who was wearing old fashioned clothes. Craig's friend then said, I thought it was fake until now, but there's a ghost of an old man in the area who sells lemonade and whoever drinks it, has two days to live. I don't know if it's just me, but that's a little creepy. Like, how are you gonna just sell lemonade to people and be like, whoever drinks it, you're, it's over for you. You're done. Why is this little girl in the middle of the woods alone? Okay, so one night, a hunter was looking through his trail cam footage when he suddenly came across this. It shows a young girl in a nightgown in the middle of the woods at night alone, right next to two deer. The man says he's never seen this little girl before and has no idea who she is. Most people think this is a ghost, or a little girl who escaped a kidnapper. Either way, something is extremely creepy about this photo, because why is a little girl in the middle of the woods at night? This picture is a complete mystery to this day, and I wonder what she was actually doing there. It's a little bit strange how the deer were, were all just chill, like they're all just there just like, alright, I'm good. Like they didn't try to run away from her or anything. I don't think it was a ghost though, it might have been someone's kid. Rip. This is my go-to like campfire story. I, I don't think I ever told this one. Hit me. So once upon a time, there was this old lady that lives in her house with a dog. Just her dog alone. Okay. And whenever she goes to bed, she would always drop her hand nearby her bed and wait for a dog to lick her hand. So that's how she knows like the dog's right beside it. Uh -huh. So one day comes, she eats dinner, she does her nightly routine, yeah, right? and she goes to bed. She goes to her bed, lies down. Puts her arm down, waiting for the lick from her dog, right? Okay. She gets the lick on her hand. Yeah. 
and she goes to sleep. Now she's awakened by a sound of a drip. A drip. 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 And she wakes up. She's like, okay, let me check the washroom. Uh, she goes to the washroom and she sees, oh shit, it's the sink. Like, it's dripping. Yeah. So she tightens the knobs. It stops dripping. She goes back to her bed. Goes to sleep again. Drops her hand down. Waits for the lick. She gets a lick from her dog. Uh, goes to sleep. Now she's awakened the second time. And she's like, what is that? So she goes up. She takes the washroom. Now it's the shower. The shower is dripping, right? Uh -huh. Like, okay, turn the knobs, tighten it, whatever. Go back to bed. Yeah. Put her hand down, get the lick. Uh-huh. Goes to sleep, right? Right, right, right? Now she wakes up again and she hears the dripping, but it's coming from the basement this time. Uh -huh. So she goes down to her basement. Yeah. She walks down and she hears the drip getting closer and closer, right? Okay. And she sees her dog hung by a rope. Okay. Dripping blood from its head. Whoa. Onto the floor. What the hell? And then on the wall. Yeah. It says humans can lick too. No. <laughs> oh. Wait. So a human was licking her the entire time? A human was licking her hand. No. It's the scary story about the man at the window. One night, a man was laying in his bed and it was raining outside. There was lightning and thunder and the man could not sleep. His house was in the middle of nowhere, and he had no curtains on his bedroom windows, so he had a good view of the fields behind his house. It was pitch black outside, and every time lightning striked, it lit up the whole landscape for a split second. All of a sudden, during one flash, the man saw a figure standing in his field. It was a man covered in all black. He was just standing there, staring at the house. With every flash of lightning, the man got closer and closer to the house, until he was right outside the man's window. The man's room was pitch dark, and he was completely terrified. When the next flash of lightning came, the guy was not at his window anymore, but instead standing right over him on his bed. The man then jumped out of his bed and ran out of his room. He then got his cell phone and called the police. When the police arrived, they did not find any trace of the man that was in his house. Ever since that night, the man prayed before bed every single night, hoping that man never returned. Now, if another man has to make you pray to not come back to your house, that's insane. I feel like he'll be good, though. I don't think he's going to come back. At least that's what I think. The urban legend of the Devil's Gate. Libertyville in Northern Illinois is famous for a scary urban legend about a creepy looking gate on a deserted country road and the horrifying events that occurred there. If you drive about a mile north of Libertyville, down the desolate and secluded river road, you'll come to a place where the road makes a sharp right turn. If you look very closely, set back from the road, you will find a menacing looking iron gate. According to local legend, in the 1920s, the Libertyville Gate was the entrance to an exclusive girls' finishing school. It was a quiet and polished place where young girls from Chicago's well-to-do families were able to receive a proper education. All went well until one terrible night in the 1950s when the school principal snapped and killed four of the young girls in his care. As the legend goes, the mild-mannered principal inexplicably lost his mind one night and in a fit of madness, the girls. Then, for unknown reasons, he cut off their heads, carried them down to the gate, and placed them on top of the spikes. Their bodies were never found, and the principal was arrested and tried for his crime. The authorities tried to hush up the whole incident, but parents refused to send their children to the school, and it had to close down. As time went on, the horrible murders were forgotten. The girls' school was demolished, and by the 1950s, the property was being used as a sleepaway camp for bows. All was well until one horrible night in 1963 when a camp counselor discovered that four young bows were missing from their tent. In the dark, the counselors searched the grounds for the missing children, but they could find no trace of them. As it grew lighter, they approached the gate and discovered the remains of the missing bows. Their severed heads had been stuck on the spikes of the iron gate. Their bodies were never found and their killer was never identified. The police suspected that one of the camp counselors had committed the crime, but there was never enough evidence to prove it. After the scandal, the camp was forced to close down and the property has lain vacant ever since. It is said that the gate is haunted by the children who died there. People passing by the gate at night claim to have heard the sounds of children crying and screaming. 
Others claim to have seen blood running down the wrought iron supports of the gate. They say that if you go to the gate at midnight on the anniversary of the murders, you will see the phantom heads of the girls and boys appear on the rusted spikes. Their eyes will be staring straight at you, and their mouths will be moving, stretching wide open as if they are silently screaming. I'm not trying to scare you guys, but you need to hear about this. In 2013, the CIA declassified a 1966 document called The Adam and Eve Story. The document was written by somebody named Chan Thomas. The document is just over 50 pages and it discusses cataclysms that happened throughout our ancient past. The document claims that civilization and humanity had been reset multiple times due to the Earth's poles flipping, with the disturbing message that it will happen again. Chan Thomas said this cataclysm will cause massive earthquakes and tsunamis with apocalyptic flooding. Weirdly, 30 years after the document was released, a full-length book was released and it's much longer. But the Adam and Eve story raises a lot of questions, like why is the CIA talking about this document? And why would the CIA classify this document from 1966 to 2013? Do they know something that we don't know? I feel like the CIA knows like 99.9% .9 of information that we all don't know. There's like a lot of info out there and I truly feel like the CIA knows way more than we naturally already know. This is why you should never go to McDonald's late at night. One night, a teen and his friends were out driving around. It was around midnight when they started to get hungry. They were looking for places that were still open and saw McDonald's nearby. It was open, so that's where they decided to go. When they got there, they ordered their food and sat down. That's when they heard banging on the window next to them. They looked out the window to see a bloody man screaming and banging on the window, saying he was gonna come and kill them. They quickly ran to block the door so he couldn't get in, and they called the cops. When the cops made it, the man already ran off and no leads were found on who the man was or where he went. Five of the scariest sentences. There was a picture on my phone of me sleeping. I live alone. You hear your mom calling you into the kitchen. As you're going down there, you hear a whisper from the closet saying, Don't go down there, honey. I heard it as well. I woke up to hear knocking on glass. At first I thought it was the window, until I heard it again coming from the mirror. I can't move, breathe, speak or hear. If I knew it was going to be this lonely, I would have been cremated instead. My sister says that my mummy killed her. My mummy said I don't have a sister. This is why you should always trust your gut. In the early 1970s, a college student decided to hitchhike his way home after class. A car pulls up, a man offers him a ride, and he climbs in. As soon as the car started moving, the student felt totally uneasy, like something was wrong but he couldn't quite place it. Without saying anything, he waited till the next time they slowed down and he flung the door open and ran away. Two years later, he's flicking through TV channels when he comes across this special interview with a death row inmate, and it's just the audio recording, so he hears the interviewer ask the inmate, why did you remove all the door handles inside of your car? The man just goes, well, the first time I tried to kill someone, I picked up a college hitchhiker who got smart at some point and jumped out of my car. So, lesson learned, remove all the door handles. When they showed his picture, the student knew immediately that he was supposed to be the first victim of John Wayne Gacy, aka the killer clown, who had killed over 30 men and boys in his clown room and stuffed them into his basement. Uh, I might be getting the times wrong, like maybe it was later, but don't cars like kind of automatically lock when you... I mean, I don't know what, what, what year John Gacy was really running around killing people, so I'm pretty sure car doors just lock. Right? Just automatically? Am I tripping? There have been so many cases of time travelers, bro. Did you see the one about the guy at the Mike Tyson fight? With the iPhone, right? Bro, he... he I don't know if it's an iPhone, but he has a smartphone. Yeah. How do you have a smartphone in 1998? Yeah. Look, I'm gonna be honest, right? I, we cover a lot of conspiracy theories on this goddamn yeah. podcast. A lot of them, I'm like, I don't know if I believe it. It's just interesting to talk about. But like, the more I do research into it, I'm like... It ha- like there's too many instances. A recent news story of a demon in a child's bedroom. What do you think? Tori McKenzie is begging for help online after capturing what she describes as a demon standing over her grandchild's bed. Miss McKenzie set up a motion activated camera at her son's house after complaints his two year old daughter Amber was talking to something unseen in the middle of the night. 
The grandma checked her camera's app days later to find a bone-chilling image of a figure standing very close to her sleeping grandchildren with what she described as it having a horn on its head and long claws. The creature is captured standing awkwardly, looking upwards just before 3am. Miss McKenzie says when she tried to rid the house of the evil presence by burning oils, she claimed cabinets and curtains opened and closed and music began to play by itself. The grandmother insists the discovery has left her fearing for her grandchildren's lives and that the photo is real and could not be photoshopped because she does not have the technical know-how to change the image. To me, someone could have just broken into their house and was like, all right, well, I'm going to stand over this baby. So that's what I think. You won't believe what this couple caught on their home surveillance. Amy and Joey Radkeef had set up CCTV footage in their home to watch their pets while they were away. And they ended up catching a creepy figure of a woman dressed in a nightgown. Watch this video. Did y'all see that? Cause I did. And then the cats get spooked and run away. Well, apparently this woman in the nightgown was a woman that passed away in their building. Other residents who have also lived here have also seen this creepy woman. Bro, if that was me, I'd move out so fast. Make sure you check me out on YouTube. I'll link in bio for more scary, random, funny stuff. This is one of the most mysterious things that has ever happened in the abandoned town of Stonebrook. So Stonebrook was this town that was historically really dependent on mining, but once that industry kind of got up and left, almost 100% of the town's population followed. But there were still security cameras that were left over. CCTV cameras that were left over from the late 90s started to capture and transmit what appeared to be a single person who was living in that town. And what's really eerie about this footage is that they're mostly seen alone, but they're just kind of standing there. They're not really doing anything or looking anywhere. But eventually those cameras started to transmit to people, and the footage just got eerier because I don't even know how to explain the context of a photo like this. Still, all of this footage is very far away, right? We never really got a close-up shot of that original person until we got this in 2001. This added to the haunting collection of footage of the unknown person in that town. To this day, the lone resident of Stonebrook kind of remains this haunting relic of a forgotten city. This home is so haunting it was legally declared so by the New York Supreme Court. Most commonly known as the Ghostbusters ruling, the case centers around one Lavetta place in Nyack, New York. The Ackley family lived in the home for decades and during their time had many paranormal encounters. Hearing footsteps and voices, the family awoke every morning to their beds shaking and were even visited by the spirits in the home who donned clothing from centuries past. Locals knew it as the ghost house, but when Helen Ackley was older and widowed, she put the home up for sale in the 90s. Helen told the couple who wanted to buy it that the home was haunted, but they were okay with it and put a down payment on the home. Until a week or so later, they tried to back out of the deal and to recover their deposit, they sued Helen Ackley. And the spooky case ended up in the New York Supreme Court. The couple argued they weren't made aware of how haunted the home was. And a judge ruled in their favor and deemed the Ackley home the first legally haunted home in America. If you want the full story, check out the Avery After Dark podcast episode on this case. It is wild. And what are your thoughts? Do you think you should have to tell a buyer if your home is haunted? I mean, morally, I feel like you should be like, yo, I'm not gonna lie, there be some spooky stuff going on around here at night. So I just want you to be aware. But like financially you're kind of just like man it's a house you gonna buy the house or not like you know do you tell a buyer if a house is haunted put your thoughts down in the comments but these guys caught on camera will freak you out watch the video and i'll explain after So that slithery thing that looks like a snake wearing a wig is called a krasu. It's a famous ghost in Southeast Asia folklore. The ghost appears as a female with long black hair with her organs on the outside. In a legend from Thailand, a beautiful princess was executed for loving someone of a lower status. She was going to be burned alive, but before she told a witch to cast a spell on her to save her. However, the spell was put on her too late, so it only saved this part of her. That's why her organs are on the outside. So what do you think? Did these guys capture this spirit? Because what is that? For more freaky stuff, follow me on YouTube. Practically, the whole new classroom just exploded. Strange notes would be left on the front door of the schoolhouse. School officials reported the schoolhouse haunted. This story takes place at the Wild Plum Schoolhouse located near Plum Creek, 1944, North Dakota. 
Lawrence Daily Journal published a story titled Jitterbug Cole Closes a School. Teacher and children report mysterious events. Hoping for answers, the fire marshal Charles, he sent the Cole to the FBI. The public had questions, people were terrorized. When you live in a small town, people talk and they want answers. These are videos humans were never meant to see, part 22. Okay, so we all know how terrifying black holes are, but I guarantee you never heard what a black hole sounds like. The video I'm about to show you shows you exactly what a black hole sounds like, and it's absolutely disturbing. Part of me feels like space is another version of the ocean, if that makes sense on a bigger scale. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, it's like a different version of the ocean. Just think about it. There's something really wrong with this deer. It might just be a skinwalker. Thing might just be really sick. If you want to learn more about skinwalkers, check out my recent video. I talk about all things skinwalker and give you some creepy facts. Link in bio. One Minute Scary Stories, Episode 3 Monster Under the Bed. My son had not quite been himself today. I couldn't put my finger on it, but he just didn't seem right. I shrugged it off, thinking he may just be feeling out of sorts. I begin tucking him into bed, and he tells me, Daddy, check for monsters under my bed i look underneath for his amusement and there i see him another him under the bed staring back at me quivering and whispering daddy there's something in my bed if i was a father that would be such a mind freak man i'd be in my head it's like yo i would know what to do man let me know in the comments what you would do it's raining worms in china right now okay recently there's been a lot of weird things going on in china like them finding a new island covered in dinosaurs. And now apparently it's raining worms. It sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, but there's actually a video proving it. Who would have thought we would ever see a day where it's raining worms? They even told all of their citizens to carry umbrellas so they don't get hit by the worms. That doesn't even look real. How do you get raining worms? It's definitely like an airplane that like accidentally unloaded a bunch of worms or something. Has to be. 10 years after the disappearance of flight MH370, the search for the Malaysia Airlines plane could resume. Here's the latest on the investigation. But first, a recap. MH370 was a flight that departed from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia to Beijing on March 8th, 2014. The Boeing 777 took off at 41 local time with 239 people on board. At 1.30 a.m., as the plane had just entered Vietnamese airspace, the plane suddenly disappeared, as seen here on flight radar. There were search efforts for MH370 for over four years, mainly by the Australian, Malaysian, and Chinese governments, then by the American company Ocean Infinity. On May 29, 2018, the Malaysian government officially announced the end of the search, as many relatives of the passengers continue to demand new search efforts 10 years after the disappearance. Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim made this statement on Monday, March 4, 2024. If there are compelling case evidence that need to be reopened, we will certainly be happy to reopen because the, whatever need to be done must be done. Back in 2018, a 400-page official report presented by the Malaysian government established that the investigation team is unable to determine the true cause of the disappearance of MH370. Witnesses reported seeing a ball of fire in the sky on the night of the crash and traces of fuel in the water near the location of the disappearance, but no piece of the plane was officially found on site. 
A few days after the disappearance, Malaysian authorities stated that the Boeing 777's communications had been disabled, that the change of course was the result of a deliberate action, and that the plane had continued to fly for nearly seven hours, effectively expanding the search perimeter well beyond the Malaysian and Vietnamese coasts. Several other leads were then explored, terrorist hijacking, suicidal action by the pilot. However, according to a 2017 DGSI report, there was nothing suspicious in the profiles of the 2 and 27 passengers and 12 crew members. Still, according to French investigators, it is likely that the pilot flew the plane to the end, but nothing supports the suicide theory. Relatives of passengers and some journalists also mention the possibility of the plane being destroyed by a missile, a theory that has never been confirmed. Debris from the plane has since been found very far from the initial search area, in Reunion, Madagascar, and Tanzania. These debris are considered to be probably or certainly from flight MH370. That really makes you try to think, like, what really happened? Because all of a sudden, everything, you know, they're saying no one looked really suspicious. Everything was going well. The pilots weren't, didn't really sound or look suicidal. So that the missile theory would make the most sense because the debris of the parts of it were all over the place. But at the same time, I feel like you'd be able to track that in a way. Someone in the comments of that video was like, Oh, it's kind of crazy how we could find planets light years away, but we can't find a plane that literally had its signal on or off or something like that. And I was like, it's low true. How can we know about these planets? But we don't even know about a plane that just randomly disappeared like this. Like, come on, bro. Maybe whoever is looking into it don't have the money for that, I guess. Anyways, if you guys liked the video, please like the video. Remember to check the chains down in the description. Love y'all.